It's got him with a body shot, was it? No, it was on the chin, it was. It was shot right up to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's all over the place. He's in real trouble. Tate's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's a The World Jamiel Cuatro Alas Casimero And his opponent across the ring He is the defending world champion Fighting tonight out of the blue corner He's wearing white with red and gold And weighed in at 8 stone 4 pounds Hailing from East London, Eastern Cape South Africa, he has a professional record of 28 wins, three defeats, with 21 of his 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former IBF Junior Bantamweight World Champion, and tonight, the reigning and defending WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Zolani Lesbourne! Okay, for cold break boys, you take one step back. Don't throw any punches on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch close. Good luck, lads. Well, we know that Tete is a terrific technical boxer and also that he's got power but he's not been in the ring competitively since October last year in that time Casimero has had three knockout victories his last four wins have all come by stoppage he is a banger and he is most definitely here thinking and believing that he can defeat this brilliant South African Well, the obvious <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of Teddy. Which, which is, is achievable, but the problem is then you have that uppercut that, to worry about. When we've seen that, how, how effective that can be in the past. He takes a little half a step back, Teddy, and then whips that uppercut right through the middle. Teddy had one win, which came in 11 seconds, the quickest ever in a world title fight. Well, it's not... Uh, I suspect that might never be broken. <laughs> Casimero, who'll be known to British fans as the man who stopped Charlie Edwards in September three years ago in an IBF flyweight title defence. He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez. Both those came by way of stoppage. Oh, he's a quality operator. And if you allow him, if you allow him for, for with momentum, and he gets it on his side, then he's, then he's a really hard man to deter, he really is. So for Tete, it's just keeping him in his place all the time. Pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out. Not shortening the gap. Tete, tremendous athlete, stands five foot nine. And only weighed eight stone four at the weigh-in. Comfortably made the eight six limit. That's that and that's the crazy part of it. Oh, oh. On occasion, he kind of just does enough. We commentated oh, on a fight over in Yekaterinburg last year. It was that fight last October. Yeah. And that was that sort of fight, wasn't it? He won by about a four or five point margin, but he, he never really took any risks at all. No, I, I, you know, he, he can coast the fight, can he? So he can just, he can stick in second gear, just pick you off and be happy with that. Well, fairly quiet opening round. Bell just coming up as uh, Casimero tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through thin air. And Tete may be just doing enough. We'll get Barry's verdict in a moment. Well, as we go into the second round, how did you score that one, Barry? I give it to Tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge. 
for me. Casemiro didn't really do uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? Test will come when Casimero lands one of those big punches, if. Or when he or, or when he fully commits to an attack. He's jumped into a few attacks, but I don't think he's been fully committed. And if he, when he does that, if he can be effective or if Teti can read it, and as we said earlier, whip that uppercut in, in the, in the, on the target. Casimero promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao. Sean Gibbons representing the little master over here. I think he's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. Yeah, well, it's, it's a significant <laughs> job, you know. He introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure I'm not sure which it was. Again, Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shots. But also, with him not doing that, means he's not being remotely effective. And even though Tete is not doing enough, he should be doing a lot more with that, with that right jab, to be fair. Tete just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over pretty much every fight that he's faced. Talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo. Yeah. The Cuban is fighting Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondao. And look, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight. Oh. They might just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match, could each other to make the first move, yeah. Which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is. You know, and again, Casemiro's trying to trying to attack, but oh, short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. As ever, Tete's entourage came to the ring singing and dancing as the second round ends. How have you scored them both? Yeah, I give them both to Tete, but you know, he's only barely doing enough, John. I just think. Well, it's what we said, isn't it? I mean, yeah, this is he what he did against uh, Mikhail Aloyan when he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he, well obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, you know, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fight with the longer reach. I, I want to keep it long. you got to make, you got to try and bring it to me. Bags of experience, though, Casimero. Got a record of five wins and two defeats in world title fights. Tete, five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Oh, Casimero got him. He's got him with a butt now. He's given hits. He's got him with a body shot, was it? No, it was on the chin. It was. It was a short right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's all over the place. He's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can Ca Referee asking, is he OK? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now. And finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by John Real Casimero of the Philippines and the big South African favourite suffers a defeat which was simply not expected, no way. Well, we're sat here 
just praising Tete up. And all of a sudden, Casemiro comes in with a short hook, hits, uh, sort of turns the body, hits, hit, hits Tete sort of flush on the chin, squared up. And that was it, he crumbled. It, was, I, I, it caught him on the, on the blind side from where we're sitting. And you, I mean, you did well to pick that up because it was such a quick, short shot. It was. He just, well, he jumped in the attack there, and you know, and, and we're saying how good Teddy is, and he waits and he waits for you to make the mistake, waits for you to engage. But we didn't. You know, we wouldn't give him Casemiro enough credit for all the experience he has and how quick he can close the gap. And it was a lovely, a lovely, short, powerful hook. Well, I think it was a right hook. Caught, well, it's caught. a minute or more, maybe two minutes now, since that punch was landed. It's only just now that Tete's got back to his feet. He, he, he was really, really badly stunned by this. You're see it now here. There's, nothing's happening. Now, all of a sudden, look, he doubles up really quick, but the first one well, did all the damage, and he was gone. Well, anyway, you, see, you can't see it there by the referee, but, but it was a great shot. He just he stepped around, and the left foot's gone outside of the right foot of the south ball. Oh, look, right, on right, right on the temple, right on the temple, short little right hook, right on the temple, and he does it again, doubles it up again, but the first one did all the damage. He jumps in with a body shot, which I, initially I thought was what had done it, and then he lands with two right hands to the side of the head. And he's done, now look at this now, this is, there's nothing really clean and conclusive, he got caught on the top of the head there, Tete, but he wasn't recovered from the first one, you know, the referee could have easily stepped in after the first knockdown. But, and the and, you know, referee was Steve Green was right to step in there. Tete is not defending himself. His eyes were all over the place. And wow, what a win! Tete sitting down again on the stool in the ring, and he still looks very, very dazed by what's happened in there. Meanwhile, celebrations on the other side of the ring, hugs and kisses for a new champion. And Casimero, of course, now is a three-weight world champion, having been a former light fly and flyweight world champion. And here he is putting himself right into the mix. And they talked about Tete against Inui. I wonder if it might be Casimero against Inui now. And to be fair, I feel like we didn't give Casimero enough credit because he's a world-class fighter. But I just felt that he was too small, John, didn't he? Too small coming up the weights that he wouldn't be able to maybe cope with Tete's reach and physical size. But and his speed as well, you know. I mean, yeah, of course, I, yeah. But the fact that Tete hadn't fought for over a year, I wonder if uh, that might I, be. A, maybe, a factor. maybe not. But I don't think you could take anything away from Casemiro. What he, though, he just he he seen the gap. He took that step on the outside, threw a lovely short right hook, caught him on the temple, doubled it up to make sure, and then jumped all over him. I think. It was a fantastic, a fantastic result. Coming away from home, we know Tete's not home. He feels like he's at home here. Coming away from home, really, as the opponent, no one really thought he would win. No, no one forget, people forgot that he's a two-eight world champion. No one could thought he could win, and he, he what a sensational victory for him. And Tete, and, and you've got to be happy for him. Lovely fella, Tete, in floods of tears, being consoled by his trainer Lois Mtaya. But it's all about the other man, Casimero. The man from Ormoc City in the Philippines. Oh, and he, and he does a job on him, and he does a job on Tete. Well, that's his, you know, if you've never heard of Zelane Tete, you have to trust me and Barry. He, is an out, he has been an outstanding fighter, an outstanding champion, and to give him a beating like that, a shock defeat like that, you have to give all credit to Casimero. You really do. Are oh, you too? And, you know, and, and you know, he must be a nice guy. Because Charlie Edwards is ringside, he's well, travelled up. He's travelled up to see him, so it must be something there. And so you've got to give him. Every, no, he ticks every box that you'd want from a champion. But what a win and what a statement he makes in a in a fantastic division. There is Charlie Edwards at ringside, enjoying the moment. I wonder if he knows we're talking about him. And there's the moment which makes boxing special. Congratulations from Tete to the new champion. We didn't really see that one coming. And here now is Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 14 seconds of round number three. Our referee in charge, Steve Gray, waves it off. Therefore, your winner by way of technical knockout and new WBO bantamweight champion of the world, John Riel Cuadro Alas. To say he is happy would be a significant understatement. He is utterly delighted.